Well, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Margaret Tolliff, senior contributor, senior contributor for Axios. I'm also director of Syracuse University's Institute for Democracy, Journalism, and Citizenship, and I'm very happy uh, to have you here with us today uh, for another great event at Axios House here during RNC Week in Milwaukee. Uh, if you're on social media, please use the hashtag Axios House when you're posting, and of course, please visit axios.com for all the up-to-date election coverage from our newsroom team. Okay, uh, I am going to see some stuff on the board in a second. Excited to dive in with our two guests here next to me. Uh, I'm joined on the far side by John Gerzema, CEO of the Harris Poll, and by Alfonso Aguiar, who heads up Hispanic engagement at the American Principles Project. Um, in case you missed it, we did release a uh, piece this morning on some new polling data gathered from our Vibes Poll partnership with uh, the Harris Poll, and this really focuses on U.S. Latino voters and their views about what matters most this election cycle. So thank you both uh, for joining us here at Axios House. Thanks, Marta. John, I want to start with one statistic from the poll that really stood out to me, and Alfonso, I think you probably feel the same way. It said that about 80% of Latinos say that they are aware of their growing electoral importance, uh, but they feel they are, quote, often used as pawns by politicians who don't actually care about us. Um, John, I'm going to start with you. What are the political implications of that finding? I think, Margaret, when we get into this poll and we unpack it a little bit more in this conversation, you're going to see a really interesting uh, set of, of data figures showing the power of the Latino voter, as we just discussed in this previous conversation, and also the fact that not only have they arrived, they want to be reckoned with and they want to be heard and understood. Um, we see that in the data, both with their intention to vote, their enthusiasm about voting. And I think that, Alfonso, this is going to be a really interesting time. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I think that that number is, is uh, very interesting. And it should tell us that the era of pandering to Latinos is over. We have a much more sophisticated Hispanic electorate, and they want to hear about ideas. The era of, and, and from both parties, the era of viva bouche, you know, <laughs> here are the mariachis. Uh, all of that's very nice. But you have to speak to them with ideas. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're shifting towards the right. Republicans, it's not because necessarily Republicans are doing a great job in terms of, of Hispanic engagement, political, is because we're winning the battle of ideas with Hispanics. Uh, I want to go, we can talk about ideas, but I want to go to enthusiasm for a second. First, you'll see some numbers uh, up here on the screen above us. I think we've been hearing a lot in recent election cycles about whether Republicans can win over the majority of the Latino vote. Are, are Latino voters who are third, fourth generation, fifth generation Americans moving to the right? But the survey seemed to me like a reminder um, number one, that there's not such a thing as, quote unquote, a Latino voter. There's not one kind of Latino voter. But also, it's not just about which party you pick. It's about whether you are enthusiastic and going to turn out, right? And that's what these numbers show us. They show us that Latino voters in the U.S. say that they are slightly less likely to vote, slightly less enthusiastic than Americans overall. But then it's the split that matters. Uh, Latino voters who identify as Republican, much more likely to vote, much more enthusiastic, a 15, 16 point gap over Democrats. What's that about? Yeah, I mean, you see the data up, up here. You see these 15, 16 point gaps on, on intent to vote, it being excited about voting. And really, Margaret, it's related to the excitement about the candidate. Also a 16 point gap that I'm excited to go out and vote for this candidate. The so, candidate Donald Trump. The yeah. candidate Donald Trump. I mean, with Latinos, that's critically important as you look at this data because as you mentioned, even though they're not attending in our survey to want to vote as much as, as all American voters, the strength of that Republican cohort and that excitement about this candidate is what I think is really interesting to well, poll. The survey showed Republic, Latino Republican voters are about as enthusiastic as all Republican voters. The, the gap is with the Democratic voters, Latino Democrats versus non-Latino Democrats. 
Uh, right. Well, Are you an expert on Democrats? <laughs> no, but I, mean, I could understand why they're not very excited with uh, their candidate, but uh, I can say that. But look, what's interesting, uh, they're Republican Hispanics are very enthused with Donald Trump. But I would say that generally, based on ideas, and we see this in the results of the, of the poll, uh, when it comes to immigration, when it comes to uh, inflation, they're very, they prefer Trump on those issues than Biden. I think that, and it's, it's, they're attracted by Donald Trump. I wouldn't say only his persona, Donald Trump and his ideas, what he stands for. The poll shows, for example, that generally the perception of, of Hispanics of the Republican Party is still the party of the rich, of corporate interests. But that's not Donald Trump. So to me, it means that if the Republican Party wants to become a Big Ten party, to really win over Hispanics, uh, I think Donald Trump has set the path, uh, the agenda uh, that, uh, that, that connects with Hispanics. Uh, and that's very interesting because remember in 2015, 2016, many, and I think at that time including me, were saying that Donald Trump did not understand the Hispanic community or the values and aspirations of Hispanics. Well, it turned out to be that in terms of the Hispanic vote, the best thing that could happen to the GOP was Donald Trump and this move towards economic populism. So I want to talk a little bit about that and go a little bit deeper yeah. based on some of our findings. John, you said in your analysis uh, of our data when it came back that the findings show that there's a real opportunity for former President Trump and now the Trump-Vance ticket, maybe we yeah. can talk about J.D. Vance right. a little bit and his role in this, to rebrand the Republican Party around the idea of upward mobility for Latinos. Can you explain why you see that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's exactly what Alfonso has just been describing, which is there is an outdated portrait of the Republican Party among Latinos to some extent. They do still see a 15-point sort of gap largely on being out of touch with ordinary workers or being perceived as sort of uh, the party for big business. But you insert the candidates into this, it's a different uh, discussion. And that's why I think what we see in the data, which makes this really interesting, in our data, uh, Republican Latinos, Latinos at large, were about 10 points higher on believing that with hard work and determination, you succeed in America. H stronger degrees on pride in America and believing in the American dream. So this is, I think, the opening of a more populist message. And that has the ability to potentially swing and move some of these voters. I agree 100%. I think at the end is who can deliver the American dream. Uh, and I think we saw it yesterday uh, during the, uh, the first day of the convention. The message was about engaging workers uh, of all types and stripes, African Americans, Hispanics, and including them, not pandering to one specific group, but treating everyone as American. That is, is aspirational. That's what Hispanics want to hear. Uh, and especially now, as the poll shows, where the economy, not the economy, it's just inflation, yeah is the number one issue by far, and they believe that Trump is, Republicans and independents yeah. believe the majority that Trump is in a better position with his policies to lower inflation and provide a better life for their, for their families. I do want to ask you about this. Why is populism a message that would particularly appeal to a Hispanic voters? Does it have to do, is that a, uh, an outcropping of immigration, of how many generations your family has been in the United States, of what kind of work you can attain. Why is a working class message or a populist message one that would resonate with uh, right of center Latino voters? I mean, well, both what we see in the, in the data, and it's really important to kind of level set this with the economic realities of this election. That's going to be the important thing for Latino voters in the cycle is what they tell us. 56% of, of uh, US Latino voters tell us that their, um, econ their personal economic situation is poor versus 44% who say it's good. Yeah. And then when you look at the, what are the most, three most important issues in the country, it's my personal economics, it's inflation, it's high prices, it's, it's affordable housing, it's wages. And that is at a three to one ratio over the next two most important issues, which are reproductive rights and immigration. So, yeah, so, so populism is, is really not a, a, 
uh, an ideology is, is a, really a political strategy to engage the vast majority of voters and citizens. You can have democratic populists. I would argue that Obama was a populist. Donald Trump is a populist. Think about the, uh, thinking of the, of the con Republican convention in 2012 in Tampa, where there was an entire day dedicated to small business owners. I love small business owners. You may, there may be some small business owners here. A lot of entrepreneurs, we, we favor that. But the majority of Americans, like the majority of Hispanics, are not entrepreneurs or small business owners. They're employees living check to check. So, so talking to is, workers is a so message. talking to workers yep. is the key to reach all Americans. You know, we talk a lot uh, when, when there's polling about voters about what's unique about Latino voters as opposed to all voters. Aren't Latinos just Americans? I mean, in fact, don't Latinos most often reflect what the independent vote looks like in America? But this survey... <clears throat> did find some differences between uh, what Latino voters say is priority to them versus what Americans overall did. And John, can you talk a little bit about some of those key differences? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that was um, pretty important uh, in addition to the economic issues was just their attitudes around um, border security. I think sometimes the Democrats um, can frame Latinos as sort of being open on borders, and that's exactly the opposite. Yeah. We saw in, by a three to one margin, sort of 62% of, of Americans, Latino Americans, believed it was really important to have strict versus um, lenient uh, border security policies. Uh, and yet at the same time, there was about a 2% difference, um, 43% uh, uh, versus 44% saying we should also be open to pathways to citizenship. When you pull back and you look at that, you see very strong beliefs on border security, and yet at the same time, an openness and willingness for those who are going to do it the right way, that are going to do it legally, yeah. um, to take that forward. This is another fascinating uh, find from this poll. First of all, immigration is not the number one issue. Uh, and the left and many in the media have been t telling Hispanics it's the number one issue. It is not but also that Hispanics have evolved in this issue. Uh, as you were saying, I think many Democrats and perhaps many immigration advocates were arguing that Hispanics were for more lenient border policies. Well, not true. When you look at the poll, the majority are for strict border policies on border security and on unauthorized immigrants. That's very dramatic. And I think the other number on a path to citizenship, I think there has been a shift there because now it's kind of divided, 43 to 41, which think, makes me think that sadly, because of the left's and this administration's uh, not paying attention to border security or actually disregarding border security completely, we are in a position where there are many Americans who in the past supported some sort of path to legalization that are now saying, Wait a second. Is that what you think the data says? I mean, I'm saying it, it may indicate that. I don't think it, it conclusively says that. Yeah, you have a much more stringent uh, view on Republican Latinos than on Democratic Latinos. But at the same point, I think that there's an interesting idea here around just shattering that stereotype that, that we don't want to have uh, border security. Uh, very last question, because we are out of time, unfortunately, is... Um, Right now, a majority of Latino voters do still align with Democrats on most things. Do you believe in the next five years that Latinos will be a majority Republican Party, or do you believe they will still comprise uh, majority support inside the Democratic Party? I believe if the Republican Party can understand the Latino voters and what they're looking for in this more populist message, and they shift just a little bit from being the party for big business to the party for my business, and creating a more personal relationship, they're going to do very well. Um, I agree. With an economic populist message, uh, I think that uh, it is very possible that in this election we could get to 45% at the national level, uh, which is probably a point higher than what George W. Bush got in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. But in this path, we could, we could get in a national vote the, uh, the, the majority of the Hispanic vote. But still, it's not that it's, we're going to control the Hispanic vote. It's a more sophisticated vote that has to be won, and it has to be won with ideas. Um, thank you both. Alfonso and John, stick around here for one 
Second, uh, to our audience, we'd also love for you to stick around. We have one more event today at Axios House. We're going to be hosting Ohio Congressman and the House Judiciary Chairman uh, Jim Jordan. That's at 4 o'clock today, an interview with Alex Thompson, our national uh, political correspondent. Thanks to Telemundo and the team at Telemundo for partnering with us on today's event. Please be sure, if you have not already, to subscribe to, subscribe to our Axios Latino newsletter, uh, which is authored by uh, Russell Contreras and Astrid Galvan. Uh, head to axios.com for more in-depth coverage on issues impacting Latinos in America today. And please stick around. Enjoy a bite if you haven't already. I look forward to catching up with all of you after this event. Thanks. Thank you both.